Hi friends, in the last lecture we defined what are known as strong and weak topologies and we proved two theorems relating to them. Now in this lecture we shall define what, are, what is known as a base for a topology and we shall be proving a proposition which uh, stipulates a necessary and sufficient condition for a subfamily to be a base for a topology. So without further ado, we shall jump into our topic. So definition. Base for a topology. Let X two be a topological space. Okay. Then a subfamily. A subfamily. B of so, is said to be is said to be a base for the topology to the topology to if every member of to every member of to that is every open set in the space, that is every open set, every open subset of the space, every open subset of the space, and the topology toe, and the toe, can be expressed as a union as a union of some members of some members of the subfamily B of B. Okay. So uh, the subfamily B of Tau. Now uh, we know that a topolo topology is actually a family, right? A family of subsets of X. Now we take a subfamily of that family. And that subfamily is said to be a base for that topology when it satisfies this condition. What is that condition? If every member of that topology, that is every open subset of the space under the topology to, can be expressed as a union. Right. A union of what? A union of some members of that subfamily. Okay. I hope that's clear. So we shall now prove a proposition stipulating the necessary and sufficient condition for a subfamily to be a base for topology. Okay, so we'll get to that. So, proposition. Necessary and sufficient condition. Necessary and sufficient condition for the base for topology. Base of a topology. Okay, so uh, the proposition goes like this: that X two be a topological space. family of toe, okay? Then, B is a base for toe, B is a base for toe, if and only if, for every point in that space, for every point, X, element of X, every point in that space, for every point in that space, and any open set G, and any open set G containing that point there exists some element, some uh, uh, set B right, some set B element of the base B 
okay such that x belongs to that member b which in turn is contained in the open set g okay so what does it say what does it say so uh, if we have a subfamily uh, b contained in tau then b is a base for tau if and only if it satisfies such and such a condition what is that such and such condition for every point in that space for every point in that space and any open set containing that point for every point in that space and any open set containing that point there exists some set in this subfamily such that that point belongs to this uh, member of that subfamily which in turn is contained in g so what does that mean so uh, a subfamily is said to be is is a, a subfamily is a base for a topology to if for every point in the space and any open set containing that point we could find some other set which is a member of that subfamily so uh, if i take any point in space okay this is x some point in some point x in the space x and some open set g containing x then this uh, let's say then uh, b is a base for to, uh, for the topology to if and only if there exists some uh, some member b which is contained which uh, which is actually contained in this open set and at the same time this point x belongs to the member set b okay this is g this is b and this point is x okay i hope that's clear okay so now this is a proposition involving the if and only if clause right so how do we prove a proposition involving an if and only if clause we first assume the condition before the if and only if right we first assume this is so then we prove that this follows from this assumption right and conversely we assume this condition and then we prove this condition follows from this right so how do we do this in this case first we assume that b is a base for to then we prove that for every point x in x this is this is satisfied okay and conversely we assume this condition and then we prove b is a base for to then that will prove our proposition so that's how we are going to prove this so So proof. Right? Okay. So what do we assume first? Suppose B is a base for toe. Right. That's our assumption. Suppose B is a base for toe. B is a base for toe. Okay. Then what? We have to prove that. To prove that. Uh, for every point. For every x. element of x and any open set and any open set g containing x uh, g containing the point x right? g containing the point x small x there exists some there exists some b which is a member of the subfamily b such that x element of b which in turn is contained in g right so to prove that we take any arbitrary point x in the space x right so let x element of x be any arbitrary point arbitrary point in the space and g be any open set g be any open set containing it okay now what now we know that b is a base for to right so we can apply the definition for the base so so since b is a base for since b is a base for to 
What's the definition? Every member of this, uh, every uh, open set, right? Every open set in the space can be expressed as a union of some members of B, right? So, every open set, every open subset of X, every open subset of X can be expressed as a union of some members of the subfamily B, right? Now, we know that G is an open set, right? Now, G, so G is an open set implies what? So, G is open implies, we can apply this definition, right? G equals union, right? Union of some B I's, I element of I, or uh, B I element of B and I and uh, capital I is capital I, okay? It's an index set. So, since G is open, G can be expressed as a union of some members of the subfamily B, right? So that's all we did here. G equals union over I element of I, B I, and uh, I is an index set. Uh, that's irrelevant. So this is this part is what is relevant. G equals union B I. Okay. Now what? Now we know that X is an element of G, right? Since G, G is an open set containing the point X. So now, now X element of G implies what? Now G is equal to union of all, all these bi's right now if x is an element of g then that means x must belong to some bi here right right g is a union of all these bi's so x element of g implies x element of dj okay for some bj element of b and j element of i okay now what X element of BJ for some, BJ element of B and J element of I, J element of I. Next, what should we do? Is it supposed to prove that? There exists some B element of B such that X element of B contained in G, right? So now we have BJ. Now what? Thus we have uh, BJ element of B. Right, sorry, thus we have, so thus we have X element of B, BJ, where BJ is an element of B and BJ is contained in G. Why? Why is BJ contained in G? Because G equals union BS, right? That's what we said, in the, that's what we said earlier, right? So, X element of B, BJ where BJ is an element of B and BJ is contained in G. That is, i.e. there exists some BJ element of B such that X element of BJ which is contained in G. Okay. Now all we need to do is plug in B, uh, B for BJ, right? Put BJ equals B. Right. Then what? Then this statement becomes there exists some there exists some B element of B such that X element of B contained in G. So we proved the first side, right? We proved that uh, B is a base for O and we proved this statement. Now, uh, we have to prove the converse part. How do we prove the converse part? We have, to assume, we have to assume that this is so, this is the case. And then we have to prove that B is a base for 2. So, we will prove the converse part now. So, now for the converse part. So, conversely, we assume the latter condition, right? Conversely, assume the latter condition.
Okay. Then what? We take any open subset H. Okay. Let H be any open subset. H be any open subset of X. Then what? According to the latter condition, for any point X and H, we can find some member in B such that X belongs to that member and that member in turn con is contained in H, right? So, then for any point X element of H, right? For any point X element of H, that exists, that exists what? That exists some member in B, right? Let's call it BX, okay? That there exists some BX element of B such that X element of BX which is in turn contained in H, okay? Now, uh, note this that I have called this BX, why? Because we are taking any point X in H, okay? And that's a variable point. So, uh, I'll just draw it here. Uh, we're taking the open set H, right? So I'm taking a point x here, suppose this is x, it's a variable point. So we can vary this point x and accordingly we get different sets bx, right? So uh, corresponding to this point we get a bx here, corresponding to this point x here we get another bx here, corresponding to this point x here we get another bx here and so on. And this is H, right? So, H can be expressed as a union of all these B axes. Okay. So, what does this mean? This implies that H equals union over all the axes of H, right? All the points X and H, B X, right? Union over, union of all these B axes where X varies in H. Okay. Now watch. So what does this mean? This means that that is this means that what x can be sorry h can be expressed as h can be expressed as a union of some members of B, right? Since B x is uh, since B x belongs to B, right? So H can be expressed as a union of some members of B. So, therefore, by definition, B is a base, right? B is a base for two. So we have proved the converse part. So that's our proof. That's the proof. I hope that's clear. So, thanks for watching.